Ampere's law for solenoids to calculate the value of the magnetic field, which we don't denote with the letter B, inside the solenoid. So we've got two equations for magnetic fields inside of solenoids. One looks like the one on the left, where the magnetic field inside the solenoid in the middle is mu naught ni over L, or the other version of it is the magnetic field is equivalent to mu naught ni. Notice I've made the n over L and the little n here both in pink because they're, they represent the same thing. N, capital N, is the total number of turns. L is the overall length of the solenoid. And by that I mean this, like if I've got a solenoid, it's basically just a coil of wires. I don't mean the length of the wire itself if I unraveled it. I mean the physical length of the solenoid, like that. So L is the physical length of the solenoid. Now little n is simply turns per length. So they're the same equation. Little n is just the same thing as n divided by L. So in part A, part A wants us to figure out the value of the magnetic field inside a solenoid where the solenoid has 600 turns, that's n, And the length is 15 centimeters, but of course in physics we want meters, so that's 0 0.15 meters. And the current that the solenoid is carrying is 5 amps. And we wish to find B. So given this information, the first equation is the one we want to use. So I want to go B is mu naught Ni over L. Now mu naught is on your formula sheet. And it looks like this, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. Now, students often find that complicated to put into their calculators, um, especially when you're using the exponent button in your calculator. And just a little, a little hint, 4 pi can be written as pi times 4. And I just find that easier. You can go pi times 4 exponent negative 7, and you get mu naught. It's a lot easier than entering 4 times pi, getting a value, and then multiplying it times 10 to the negative 7. It gets confusing, and quite often you get an extra factor of 10 in there. So there's mu naught. Now, the units for mu naught are tesla meters over amperes. N is 600. And that's just turns. I is 5 amps. And the length of that solenoid in meters is 0.15 meters. And when I crank all of that through, I get a magnetic field inside, down the center of that solenoid, of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 teslas. So remember, solenoids are basically electromagnets. And we're calculating where all that magnetic field is concentrated. So imagine I've got these field lines going around like this on the outside, through the center, around like this on the outside. They're all concentrated in the middle, and that's where we're figuring out the value of the magnetic field, down the center of that solenoid. Now, part B. The same solenoid is pulled from either end, and the coils are moved further apart. So, imagine this was our original solenoid, the pink one I drew, and if I tug on it like a slinky, all those coils get further apart. So, obviously, the solenoid will get longer. And notice that L is on the bottom. It's suggesting that as L gets bigger, L gets longer, the strength of the magnetic field gets weaker. And when you sketch it like this, you can see why. The solenoid density, the density of the windings gets less. So they're interacting with each other with a little bit weaker of a, a magnetic field. So the closer, the more tightly packed these coils are, the stronger the magnetic field. Now, they're saying uh, the new density is 10 turns per centimeter. So the first question is, how long is this stretched solenoid? So we know we've got 600 turns, and we know we've got 10 turns per centimeter. So we want to figure out the new length. So if I take 600 turns and just do some unit conversion, and I know that there's 10 turns for every one centimeter. I want to cancel off the turns. So turns are going to go in the bottom. 
10 turns for every one centimeter. If I simply do this division, I get the length of the solenoid is 60 centimeters. Now the original length of the solenoid was 15 centimeters. So I've made the length of my solenoid bigger by a factor of four times. It's four times longer. And according to my equation, since the magnetic field is inversely related to L, my magnetic field should be four, one fourth its original value. So if I go 2.5 and I divide it by four, I should get my new magnetic field. So if I go 2.5 times 10 to the negative two, and I divide that by four, I get the strength of my new magnetic field to be one quarter of the original value or six times 10 to the negative three Teslas, 6.3 technically.